Okay, I think we've solved our issue. Sorry about that. <laughs> and hopefully Harriet will be live very soon. Just going to wait for her to connect and go live with us. Hey. Hi. 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 Oh, good. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Good. Good. How's your day? Yeah, I've been training this morning and then just been not really up to much this afternoon. Lockdown fun. No day off or a Sunday day off? Sunday is usually my day off when I'm at home. When you don't have <laughs> anything? No, yeah, basically. Good. Good. Um, I think. We're going to have quite a lot of people watching today. And um, I think they all know almost everyone who carry a dart, the play this tennis player. But I don't think they know that much about you, who you are, of course. So if you can, I don't know, what would you like someone to know about you, carry a dart off the court? Well, what would people like to know is the question. But um, yeah, I mean, a lot of people see me as Harriet as a tennis player, but I'm also Harriet the person. And um, yeah, I mean, I like to do normal things. I'm a normal person at the end of the day, normal human being. Enjoy spending time with, time with my friends, my family, uh, doing some fun things, which obviously due to the circumstance at the moment, you can't do so much of. But definitely during this lockdown, I've done a lot of um, online quizzes with friends, Zoom quizzes um, and, and stuff like that. That's been quite fun. So you've still been able to keep in touch. I know. Yeah, I mean, thank God for technology, right? Because otherwise we would be totally... I've noticed that you quite like social media. You're quite active. On yeah, you say that, but my agent always tells me that I'm not very active at all. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I try to be. Um, I probably am not as much as I probably should be, but I try to show some fun things and some normal day-to-day -day things too. And what do you do when you're off court? Like how, in your downtime, uh, where do you go with your friends? Um, how do you spend? Yeah, so, I mean, I'm away for, you know, 30, 30 weeks of the year usually. So when I'm home, it's quite a luxury. And mm -hmm. that also tends to come with making myself very busy to the point where I'm so busy. Um, that I'm quite tired, but um, yeah. I just like to go and see my friends, spend some time with them, do normal things, you know, go to market. I quite like going to food markets. I'm quite a foodie. I like to go to the cinema a bit, um, shop shop around a bit, although I get a bit bored with that. I much prefer online shopping. It's a lot easier and less stressful. Um, and visiting my grandparents, you know, I think... As you get older, you realise that you're not just getting older, but they are too. So it's important to spend as much time as possible with them. Have you been able to see them since the first lockdown? The first lockdown, I think when it was when we were able to do so, um, I was able to go and see my grandparents. Um, but other than that, no. Again, you know, we have phones and um, video cameras, so it's you know, still being good to be able to get in contact, but albeit it's not the same at all. Yeah, true. So you prefer, I, I was going to ask you for uh, this like social media thing and just like keeping in touch with friends through Instagram or Zoom, or whatever, or just being live. Being the I much prefer being live. I mean, it's great that we can, you know, especially with how much I travel, you know, it's great that I can keep in contact with people through the phone and stuff, but sometimes I'm not the best person on my phone mm -hmm. in terms of messaging, um, just from being so busy and also also trying to stay off my phone a bit as well, because I think you can kind of get addicted to them. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, no, I much prefer being live in person. You know, just being able to be allowed to go for a walk with, the, with friends is really nice now. So tomorrow I'll be going with one of my friends, um, for a walk um yeah so that'll be really nice <laughs> it's quite a luxury isn't it it is i think um we just go for a walk 
yeah we definitely didn't appreciate it as much as i think now we do that it definitely is a luxury to be able to have so much freedom within our lives yeah. have you um have you had some fun things going on during lockdown or have you been completely confined to home i've um i've seen a few here and there i've tried working out uh, so i'm trying to keep myself busy the live it also helps gives me something to think something else to think about so yeah, yeah. i try to stay active as much as possible um just going back to tennis a bit, what is your first memory of tennis so my first memory is thinking that the tennis racket was a guitar um yeah i was pretty young and i didn't wasn't very interested in playing but i definitely thought it was a guitar and that was i think quite amusing for both my parents yeah do you have a artistic side do i sorry what did you say artistic side yeah i mean i used to play the i used to play the violin when i was growing up at school i actually still have my violin i think it's way too small now because it's they have different sizes yeah. Um, but my mum always laughs because I can still play Happy Birthday on the violin. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that happening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. And when did you start playing? How? So I was seven and I started playing at the Cumberland. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, my parents met there um, and they're still members there and we live very close by to it. So. Um, it's that's quite a nice memory and you know we have a lot of our close family friends and everyone that we're still in contact with and that we still see a lot so that's all pretty nice do you think it um it was a good thing for you just let's say throughout your career to have both of your playing tennis was it easier for them to understand you a little bit more and you know to kind of right expectations for you as a child and your progress and everything yeah so my mum plays tennis but my dad's actually plays squash he doesn't play tennis although he can you know hit the ball over the net and he likes to think he knows to tell me what he wants that I can do which is quite amusing um but I definitely think it's it's helped in terms of yes they know about the game but it can also be Sometimes, you know, when you when I come home from training or something, I don't really want to talk about, yeah. like, my day necessarily. Um, so I think it can work in both ways. I think I've just been super lucky to have quite relaxed parents in terms of, you know, they never got mad at me if I lost a match um, and things like that. So I think I was quite lucky in that in that respect. Mm -hmm. Who do you get your side from? Your mum or your dad? Oh, that's hard. But I think my mum. I think my mum. I'm I'm more like my mum in some ways, and then other ways with my dad. But definitely the competitive side. I think that's that's my mum. Our games at Christmas get pretty out of hand. Um, <laughs> what do you uh, play? Usually? Pardon. What games do you play usually at Christmas? Uno, Uno usually. But actually, we have we do have a lot of games, and I was going through um, our games covered, and we really should be playing a lot more of the games but usually when we play cards especially me and my sister gets very out of hand and a lot of words are spoken let's just say <laughs> most of the time depends but mostly me is it uh, do you still play with your mom because we talked a little bit about um this before i actually played um in a middle sex league against your mom and she's quite mm -hmm. a player. and i'm guessing it gets does it get a bit competitive if you still play with her? Or, um, well, to be honest, we don't really play together anymore. But definitely, growing up, I she spent a lot of time with me, helping me, and also, you know, just playing with me. And yeah, I mean, now she has her friends that she wants to play with. So, and I'm quite busy with my training and everything. But we have played one match together for the Cumberland, mm -hmm. but many years ago. Um, and she asked me recently, actually, if I would play one more <laughs> match with her, which I hope to be able, be able to do and be around for. So hopefully we can rekindle the Dart Ladies <laughs> partnership. <laughs> um, how was it, how was that leap 
they've from playing local tournaments like grade ones and twos to then playing national level and then playing to turning professional like turning pro what was so, so i played i don't actually think i played that many domestic in terms of um I mean, up until I was under 14, I think I played quite a few domestic events. Um, what I don't think, I think they were called Grand Prix back in the day. Um, I feel really old talking about this. Um, An old, old, old. <laughs> so I played quite a few of those. And then once I got to under 14 and I started traveling a bit and playing tennis Europe's, mm -hmm. we kind of ventured out abroad a bit more. Um, but I did, I did win the under 16s nationals, uh, singles and doubles a year young. So I did win that. Um, and then kind of from then I kind of just played way more internationally mm -hmm. just to kind of venture out and see kind of where, where I was at. Was there a big difference? Um, I mean, you know, we have a, sm I'd say we have a small crop of girls in comparison to say globally you know, you might, we might be, you know, we were really strong in my age group, 1996. Um, you know, at Tars, we had six players, for example, mm -hmm. which is a lot, I would, I would say. And, you know, we had a really strong group, but then, you know, you go to the Czech Republic or Russia, they have twice the amount of players who are just as good, just as hungry, you know. The drawers are full of them. <laughs> yeah. That's, so, yeah. Um, I think, you know, it's important, especially if you're if you're winning a lot here, to kind of venture out and 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 play abroad because, you know, you can kind of get into your own little bubble here. Whereas as soon as you step out, you realise there are, like I said, way more, you know, tons of girls that are just as good, um, just as hungry. So, um, for me, that was a really important step to kind of go abroad, um, test myself, and also try and play in the bigger competitions for whatever age group category I was playing. So, yeah, I mean, there's definitely significant jumps throughout my tennis journey from, you know, from playing domestically to going to under 14 internationally to then playing junior ITFs. And, yeah, I mean, and especially as you go through the categories, you know, from grade three, grade two, grade one in ITFs and, and then you play the Grand Slams, of course there's, there's jumps and... Bit of a shock. Um, yeah, there's definitely, you definitely get a feel for it. And as soon as I started playing ITFs, I remember that I all I wanted to be was at Junior Wimbledon. Just wanted to be able to make it, just wanted to be able to play. I just wanted to play all the slams so that you could be like, yep, play the slams, that's that's good, that's junior career tick. Um, and I was able to do that, which w was great for me at the time. Um, and then kind of picked up some injuries, which kind of definitely set me back. Um, still now I've been struggling quite a lot with injuries over the years haven't really played a full season as such mm -hmm. and yeah I mean as soon as you you go up the categories everything it just gets harder and tougher and tougher and um, yeah I think when you're when you're young you don't really know what what it kind of takes to to kind of be a professional tennis player you you think you know but you don't know the ins and outs you know, the from the, the choices that you make from, you know, the people always say sacrifices that your parents make, you know, the way we, me and my parents phrase it is that it's, it's a choice. It's a choice that you make rather than a sacrifice. Yeah. Um, but then again, that's just how you, how someone, someone might perceive it slightly differently. Yeah. But, you know, at the end of the day, it just keeps getting harder and harder and you've got to be able to put the work in to be able to, get to where you where you want to be so do you think that would be the same thing the decision of just trying your best and working hard as you can um to kind of you know uh, come through to that very big, like in that very big pool of girls that all play very well they're physically strong they have very has very good technique or you know what what does it take for you to come through? You know, I think you, you learn as you, you get older. And I think as well, you experience lots of things. And sometimes you kind of think you wish you'd done certain things differently. Mm -hmm. um, for me, definitely, you know, I think 
one of the biggest pieces of advice I could give someone that was mm -hmm. is younger than a lot younger than me would be to kind of focus on your body and focus on your game rather than thinking about the kind of end product. I mean, you don't want to be the best 14 year old in the world. You want to be peaking at, you know, 25, let's just say, because the women's game is getting a lot older now. Yeah, exactly. You know, and I think people, you know, then you can pick up injuries and you can, you know, there's also, you can be unlucky and, you know, there are many factors, but it's also about surrounding yourself with the right people, really good people around you, whether that's from coaching, from, you know, from a fitness trainer, from a psychologist. Um, I think it's really important that anyone who goes on that journey, that you do have that really solid foundation around you so that you can do the best that you can do because, you know, like I said, there are many people who want to become professional tennis players that are just as hungry, working just as hard. And you've got to be able to, you know, like also you said, you've got to physically be in really good condition. Um, your game's got to be on tip top shape. You know, being in an individual sport, you get found out pretty quickly. Yeah. Your game's not up to speed because you're just going to be, you're going to be on and off that court very quickly. Um, and you, and mentally, you know, you've got to be incredibly strong because week to week you're going to probably lose a match. Exactly. So you've got to be able to bounce back and what my coach always says, get back on the horse, you know, get ready. You've got to keep going again. How, how and, do you Because it's quite, I think, you know, it takes a lot of lost matches to actually understand yourself better as a player, to understand the game better. And just become there basically but it's quite difficult and that when you're 15 16 that you have to let's say lose quite a for you to progress how do you get into that mindset that what can you do yeah i think again it's about surrounding yourself with the right people and yeah i mean there are so many things that you know when i was a junior especially playing the junior slams you think it's literally everything and when you get to pro level you then realize that it meant nothing and it's just a stepping stone in your career and you know you can be the best junior in the world but it won't necessarily guarantee that you're going to be the best senior player in the world and I think again it's stepping stones in in where you're at but what I think is really important is that you know when you're 14 15 and you're really you know you're so early on in your career you're so young you don't necessarily think you're that young but you mm -hmm. really are and though you have so much time and that's also important to develop your game develop your body your body thing is the main thing i've seen so many people who can play really good tennis but their body's not just not up to speed in terms of where their tennis level is so then they sometimes will break down so then they actually can't play enough events to then where their tennis game is at so i think it's really important to the foundations of you know strength and conditioning from speed work from, from everything to kind of make sure that your body's in a really good state too i think that's kind of yeah a lot of that is overlooked a lot of the time yeah and how, how early do you think someone would want to start doing that to pay more attention to their strengthening and conditioning and their fitness yeah i mean oh that's a tough one because I'm, I'm not an expert but because I, I would definitely say as early as possible but you know I'm, I'm not saying that you know I'm not saying a 13 year old should be going in the gym lifting loads but I think you know you should have that kind of consultation with those experts to to be able to maximize what you what you need to do whether that's you know doing lots of body weight exercises and kind of retraining the small muscles or or whether that's doing a bit of more core strength because that's ultimately what your stability comes from or whether that's some coordination and, and, and lots of other things because you're still developing, growing. Mm -hmm. But I think it's definitely an aspect that um, should be looked at a lot more and especially the recovery side of things. I see so many people practice and then not do anything after. They just kind of like go off the court, whatever. It's all good, <laughs> it's all merry. Trust me, when you get to my age, you'll feel it. So don't oh, do that. Recover. How long do you take after a practice to recover? So after practices, I will, 
usually shower and stretch because um, I'm a very sweaty player. So I sweat a lot during practice matches. Um, so usually, um, depending where, on the venue, because sometimes logistically it's quite far away. So you tend to, you know, do stuff slightly in a different order. But, you know, definitely uh, go on the bike, stretch off. Um, then also eating is really important. So I usually try and eat within 30 minutes of finishing practice or matches. And whether that's in form of a shake or um, a meal, it uh, really depends on the time, the time I have um, my, and my day. Because mm -hmm. I usually plan my, my days very set. So I would say, and then I'd probably get some treatment as well. You know, I have the luxury of being able to, you know, access physio, which is great. Um, definitely helps my body a lot. So in, all in all, I think on recovery in a day, at the moment, for example, during my preseason, um, I spent an hour in the morning doing warm-ups and exercises for different injury prevention exercises. And then in the afternoon, we'll do another 30 minutes of that plus treatment. So it's quite a lot. I'm actually really happy that we're talking about currently coaching uh, full time. And I would really like the coaching to actually hear saying that <laughs> because <laughs> like something out of the world, like what warm up for an hour tennis. You know? mm -hmm. so, yeah, yeah. But, uh, going back to the sounds a little bit because you said you know when you're young you. You have this goal set in your mind and it's like the most important ever for you and you get there and realize you know it's, you know, it's not as big as you. um you know wimbledon is very it's quite a big thing but once you got there and you that position say you had some time to actually think after that was it as big as you thought it would be, like as crucial for you as you thought it would be? So my first experience playing Wimbledon was playing juniors when I turned, when I was 15. And I remember I played Sabina Sharapova on court eight, I think. Oh. And I've never been so nervous in my entire life, <laughs> literally. I lost six love, six four. And I remember in the first set that I felt my whole body was not connected. And I'd never played in so many people because it's very intimate, the outside courts, I always say. So they're very close. Everyone's very close to you. And when you're not used to that, as well as being British on home soil, having a, a massive crowd that just want you to win. Um, yeah. And you can hear them, you know, when you miss a shot, it's like, <sighs> You know, all these things, yeah, and like, suddenly, suddenly everything goes out the window, and then you look up, and you can see center court, and everything just kind of is like a bit over. I was completely overwhelmed, and I think it was great for me to have that experience because I was like, okay, the next time I play, it'll be a lot easier for me. Mm -hmm. So, um, which it was, it, it was because I was used to sound silly, but from knowing where the changing rooms are to knowing really small details about things. Mm -hmm. And I think when, when I played uh, my first Wimbledon seniors um, in 2018, um, again, it was, it was a new experience for me because obviously it was the first time I played that event. So again, it was super new to knowing where the changing rooms, where the restaurant, how long the walk is from Orangi to, to the, change rooms from Arangi to where the matches were to like everything so like you're so equipped to knowing where everything was that I felt a lot more comfortable being there so I knew I made sure I did a full recce of the entire place knowing where everything was because I didn't want to be in a position where you kind of a bit panicky because you have no idea where something is so for me that made me feel a lot more settled um and also my mum being a member of the All England, I'd been there a lot more times since, since I was a junior. So I felt a lot more comfortable, comfortable in the surroundings. Um, 
to be able to, you know, just solely focus on just playing and having a good performance and, and trying to do my best to win. So when I played seniors, it was a lot more, I say it was a lot nicer experience than my first junior experience. You weren't panicked. A lot of pressure too for a 15 year old and a lot of expectations. How was it playing mixed doubles, different than singles? Because you know, you're playing at a very big thing, but it's impressive. Yeah, so I played mixed doubles with Jay and we had this amazing run to the semi-finals and, you know, we got to play on centre, court one, we played some, you know, amazing champions who have won multiple Grand Slams. So it was an eye-opening experience for, for both of us. And, you know, I'd played singles, I'd played the world number two at the time, Pliskova, I'd lost in three sets, I'd played a really good match, I was disappointed naturally, but then also you've got to be realistic for where I was at and my ranking. It was great performance, you know, on first time playing seniors at Wimbledon, home crowd, that kind of extra pressure almost to kind of perform I always feel. Mm -hmm. um, because you want it so bad and they want it so bad and you just want everything to kind of happen and sometimes it doesn't always work out that way. Um, so yeah, then we played teamed up mixed doubles. It was quite a last minute decision. Um, we got to play on these amazing courts, which was incredible. It was definitely a lot easier to experience something so what I'd call wild um, with someone else, especially the first time we went on center and court one, because I would say both of those experiences were amazing, but it was made a lot easier because I had a partner with me. So it was like, we've got a help, almost like a helping hand, you know, we're both, we we're both so nervous, I remember. <laughs> I remember walking from the tunnel from Arangi before when we practiced. And I remember taking, I've still got the video on my phone, being like, we're playing on centre court today. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think by playing, you know, on those stages made me feel a lot better for when then, you know, last year I got to play on centre for singles. I knew what to kind of expect. You know, of course, I was on my own. It was a different experience, a different situation, playing the world number one on Super Saturday, a bit mental, you know, all of that to kind of experience. But I think by having those experiences from the mixed doubles really helped me um, believe in, my, in myself a lot more, for sure. Do you enjoy team tennis as much as doubles? Um just teams in general good as much as singles or is it just different what does it bring to you something that maybe playing singles doesn't or yeah i mean i love playing doubles i grew up at the cumberland playing lots of club matches since i was nine years old so i'm very used to playing a lot of doubles um i tend to play less doubles nowadays purely from, from an injury perspective, but I have to manage more of my load. Uh, but I do plan to play a lot more doubles when I when I get to that point. But it's it's definitely different, you know. I loved County Cup, playing County Cup over the years, played so many. I'm sure Fran Fran Brewster um, would tell you. And, you know, I've got so many fond memories of when I played my first County Week at 14 and I got duffed up by the Bucks number ones. I remember that very clearly. Wow. And yeah, and I just love the whole team atmosphere. You know, you're playing for something much bigger than yourself. And it, it's a different kind of pressure. I always think, you know, when you play for yourself and you lose, that it's on you, you know? Whereas you play in a team and you feel way more responsible. You know, if, if, if you don't win, you know, for me, I always feel like I let, I'm letting everyone down if I don't produce a result. Yeah, exactly. um, and then, you know, then I got to experience playing Fed Cup and I played two live rubbers this year. And that was another, completely another experience because, you know, representing your country, you know, you, you've got all these people there that, you know, like I said, want you to win so badly and you want it to happen so badly too. How is that? That's just a different kind of experience. How did you manage the pressure, let's say? Because I'm guessing going up to that, you know, people 
would comment even on Instagram or would send you <laughs> support messages how do you deal with that yeah I mean I love all the support and you know we had a great atmosphere in Slovakia this year and I hope to be able to be part of many more Fed Cups to come and yeah I mean it's it is there is no greater honor as a athlete I think to than other than representing your country and you know I think that's incredibly special and I think as long as you give everything that you possibly can to it, no matter the result, at least you can, you know, you come off court and you can be proud of yourself. And I really felt like I did that in, in Slovakia. And, you know, I didn't get the results I wanted. Um, but I feel like, you know, the next time I go onto court for a, for a potential live rubber, I'll be a lot more equipped to deal with everything, kind of know how everything it is. Um, you know, we have a great team atmosphere. We have a great team, uh, great support staff around us um who who make everything a lot easier for us i would say and more um, fun. Our way. and fun yeah <laughs> what what's your happiest memory of being on happiest memory that's a tough one i think you know i would definitely go back to my junior days because you're kind of carefree loving playing tennis and playing loads i mean i just remember playing you know, endless hours on the Cumberland at the Cumberland um, with fellow friends. Uh, and... Pardon? Were you practicing at the wall? Yeah, the loved the wall. <laughs> I, used to, uh, I used to play points against the wall. I never won, but hey. Um, yeah, just you know, I think you you don't realize the responsibilities you have later on when you play tennis. You know, tennis is a very expensive sport and you know, to be able to earn money in it is incredibly challenging and tough and to be able to, you know, go up the rankings and, and, and also travel the world and, and do all of that. It's not easy and it's not for everyone. And I think, you know, if I could go back to my junior days and tell myself, relax, enjoy the journey, focus more on the small things, you know, working on your body, working on your game, doing things how you'd want to you'd want to be say when you're 25 rather than thinking oh how can I beat everyone at 15 16 um you know thinking about more how to think what your game would be in 10 years time to try and do that as much as possible as early as possible to kind of refine those small details oh we have I mean we have a few questions one of them would be so you mentioned it is to have a team around you um, so tennis first official is asking who do you travel with and what do you look for in a so I travel with so I have two coaches and they split their time with me um, this is quite challenging with the tour um, to ask someone to spend every single day with me um, so I travel with uh, one of my coaches is Biljana Vesanilovic she's uh, Serbian and part of the LTA coaching team so she does certain weeks with me and then my other coach who I just recently just recently joined my team um, just after French Open is also a Serbian um, person called Vuk Bolic mm -hmm. he's part of Tip Sarovic the Tip Sarovic Academy so one of them will either be traveling with me um, all the time at tournaments and then I'm lucky enough that my fitness trainer, Ian Aylward, will travel with me for certain weeks of the year. Um, unfortunately, not full-time, as much as I would love him to be with me full-time. Um, hopefully, when I progress the rankings a bit more, that will, that will happen. And then, occasionally, we'll have a physio, physio who travels with us, um, who will look after kind of a greater number of the British players. Uh, mostly around the Grand Slams times. Mm -hmm. And um, you've recently signed with Murray's manager. Yeah. Um, why do you think that was a step for you to make? How does it change things for you as a tennis player? Yeah, I think it's it's a great step for me in my career. And I think that by being able to lean on Andy a bit to 
you know, get his advice on a lot of things. You know, he's an incredible champion and more importantly, he's a, he's a great person and super easy and fun to talk to. So for me, it's, you know, it's a good step, stepping stone for me to be able to kind of be able to, you know, speak to him about a lot of things, which, you know, I mean, it's great. And then also from the management side of things, um, they have a great team around them with incredible experience and expertise, which will hopefully help me fulfill all my on and off court needs. So I'm very excited um, that we've started watch, working together. Do you watch on Instagram? Do I watch, sorry? The lives that he usually does on Instagram. Yeah, he's They're quite funny, isn't he? Yes. Great. <laughs> I can only imagine it's very nice to be able to speak to him about many and everything. Yeah. It's quite fun. Um, I was also going to ask you if there was one moment when it was a little bit more difficult in your career and what moment was that and how did you get over it? Yeah, I mean, there's been definitely some challenging moments in my career so far. You know, last year, for example, I missed 16 weeks from injury. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I had two bone stress injuries, which are, you know, not small issues and Yeah, take a long time. Yeah, they take time. And, you know, you know, as much as people say, yeah, you're young, young, but, you know, time is ticking and, and you know, you want to get back out there and do as much as, as, as you can. And I think, I think what motivates me is, you know, just I want to be able to maximize everything that I can, whether that's, you know, I end up top 100, top 50 or, I stay outside top 100. I just want to be able to give everything that I can to be able to, you know, at the end of my career to be able to hang my rackets up and say, do you know what? I've just given everything and I've done everything I possibly could. So for me, that's, that's really important. And I think, you know, every day just trying to do the best that I can, you know, I've been rehabbing an injury at the moment since um, my last tournament in, in France and, it, you know, it hasn't been easy. There's been good and bad days, but I think what, what excites me and what, gets me up in the morning and keeps me motivated is the fact that you know I know where I want to get to and I'm not going to stop until I get there and I think I just kind of bring myself back to that when you know sometimes you're a bit tired or um, you're not having such a good day I think it's just really important to keep pushing yourself keep pushing your limits to be able to to be able to you know do do anything and to be able to get back on the the biggest stages you know at the biggest tournaments is really what motivates me. Is that how you've been? Has that been your life since you were a kid or this something you've learned how to do? Because from what I can tell, you're a pretty positive person. And you tend to kind of smile a lot and <laughs> positive. That's what it looks like. Have you always been positive in terms of your tennis or was it something you had to learn? I definitely had to learn it a lot more, um, you know, I think anyone can say that I especially hate losing. So I think by able, by being able to do everything in your possible power to be able to, you know, do the best that you can, that will then hopefully turn more into winning. Um, but also being able to see success in different ways, not just from winning and losing. I think that's that's also quite important to, to, oh, is that? to kind of find. That is my my cat. Sorry. <laughs> Fine. Billy. What's the name? His name's Billy. Billy. Oh, cool. nice. um, if you that. follow my mum on Instagram, you'll see many many um, photos and documents of um, what we call the Fat Billy Diaries because he's a little bit fat and overfed, but he's very happy. So that's the main thing. That's the that's what counts. <laughs> my mum's uh, Instagram looks exactly like that as well as like yeah the cats. I mean look I've had many tough experiences and I think that's what kind of you know I would say shapes me for who I am right now and and today and I think it's you know yes I'm very bubbly person and I'm very happy and and all of that but there's also been periods where I've been where it's been incredibly tough you know I've cried my eyes out after many matches And yeah, it's been tough. I mean, I can remember a moment from last year in Miami, 
you know, I'd been off with a pubic bone injury, um, bone stress wow. reaction, and I came back and I hadn't played since um, Australian Open. Um, and I, yeah, so I came to Miami and I hadn't played a match. And I remember being there and, you know, it was a little bit sore and I was, you know, it's kind of usual, you know, when you sometimes come back from injuries that it's a little bit sore and you can kind of need to kind of power through, through it. Yeah. And I played Mona Barthel and I lost seven, six in the third after a really long match. And I have never cried so much after a match. <laughs> Just, I think from, from knowing how much work I'd put in to be able to get to where I was, um, you know, not being able to see the instant kind of what, you know, a lot of people call success from the result. Mm -hmm. um, was really tough, but I knew after the match, you know, I, I was very upset. I cried a lot. And then that was it. No more crying. Got to get back on it. Let's power through, fit and healthy, be grateful for that, and let's kind of keep going. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of more my motto now. <laughs> Everyone has, has a moment like that. You just get it all out, and then, again, like you said, so fine. Um, uh, what do you? So I'm guessing breaking the it is one of your is one of the that for yourself. What do you think you need more of to reach to that point? Yeah, I mean, I think again, it's a because it's a stepping stone, you know. Because you know, as you move through the rankings, it only gets harder, and you know, everyone can play really good tennis on their day. Anyone could be anyone no matter what you're ranking. But the key is consistency. Being able to do it week in, week out, that is very reflective of your ranking. You know, someone who's ranked 500 could probably beat someone 200 on their day, but they're not doing that every week. They're not putting that performance in every week. And that's why they are 500 and that's why someone is ranked 200. So for me, it's just being able to consistently perform every single week and also to stay injury free as I have lost a a lot of time with injuries so I haven't been able to play a full schedule so for me to be able to you know all being well with COVID and, and all of that if we're able to play a full schedule next year that'll be a really good tick for me um in a kind of like a stepping stone again for me in, in my career right now where do you see yourself for years let's say what would be the plan for the next three years for the next three years hmm? That is a good question. The next three years. I know it's uh, kind of a longer frame. It's a big time frame, but. Yeah, I mean, for me, to be able to stay injury free and healthy, um, I'd like to hope that I'm a lot higher than I am, but you can never predict these things. And it's, you know, incredibly tough, this sport. And you never know what's around the corner. But for me to be able to stay injury free, be healthy, you know, be grateful for everything that you have and that everyone around me is healthy. I think that's one of, is, is the most important thing. But career wise, I think, you know, I know where I'd like to be. Um, and I'm just going to do everything in my power to be able to get to that. And um, if you would have played tennis, what do you think your career would have been? That's another tricky question. I always think about that. Um, I think, well, I did start studying forensic psychology um, and I do, wanna, I do want to go back and finish that um, degree. So that's something that potentially um, I would want to do. I think I watched a lot of NCIS and CSI episodes that I decided, yeah, that's me. I want to do that. <laughs> um, or something within the media um i'm a very pe i'm very much a people person and um i enjoy all of that so that could potentially be something that i do in the future too so is that what you really watch on netflix those type of TV shows oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um i think we have some people if you are in rafa or Sorry. rafa or roger it's Rafa from me. I just find him a lot more relatable in a lot of ways. Um, you know, from his work ethic, 
and everything. That's not to say Roger's not like that, but everything looks so perfect and I just can't relate to it. Um, okay. You know, I love watching Roger. Everything is so elegant perfect. and perfect. <laughs> Whereas with Rafa, I feel like, you know, he just puts his heart and soul into everything. And I just, I'm very much team Rafa and my mum would kill me if I said not because she is a massive Rafa fan. I've got a funny story actually. So we're at Wimbledon in the players' lounge. She, I'm talking diehard Rafa fan, gets really frustrated in front of the TV when he's losing, like, will basically almost be crying. Mum, don't kill me if you're watching this. And um, she, so we're in the players' lounge. We're walking, and he's in front of us walking, and she literally cannot contain herself. She's going, oh, it's, it's Rafa, it's Rafa. And I'm like, yeah, 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 I know. And she couldn't contain herself that she actually said Rafa out loud and he turned around and he was like hello and she was <laughs> it like made her made her day made her life probably um but yeah that was that was quite funny <laughs> do you do your main if and let's say apart from Rafa is there another player that really really it and like I think being British you know, I love watching Andy. And for me, it's so relatable to me as well as, as a person on the court because I can also get frustrated. And I just think, you know, you watch loads of the other players and I think people don't realise that they're also moaning too, you know, but you can't understand what they're saying. And people are always very quick to, you know, take and pick them apart and stuff, which I think is always really unfair because being English, you can understand everything that they're saying, whereas yeah. there are loads of other people doing exactly the same thing. It's just you can't understand them because they're speaking a foreign language. Uh, so for me, I love watching him because he gives so much and for everything that he's been through, I just think it's amazing that you can still be so motivated to, you know, every morning coming into practice, doing everything that you can to just be a better player and, you know, I'm sure he has massive goals and aspirations still. So I think that to me is super inspiring. Uh, and then also in the women's game, to be honest, I, I, I do like watching tennis. Um, not all the time because you're around it all the time. But, you know, I think it's incredible how much, you know, the, the level has improved over the years. And, and also so many new faces. And I think that always makes it really interesting um and i think the men's game is starting to go a bit more that way you know a lot of the next gen are coming up and I, I think it makes it so much more interesting to watch that you know you look at a grand slam draw and you don't really know who's going to win the tournament whereas before you'd probably be able to pick you know one or four would probably win it so i think i think that's um pretty cool about tennis in general not only just women's tennis at the moment just going back to the getting a bit on court because it's a question that I is Julie Blackwood what do you think is it good to have moments when you're frustrated and you just let it out or do you think it's just calm and composed all the time mm -hmm. I think it depends I think it depends on the person because you know if some for some people bottling it all up can be like the detriment to them and they can't perform then I think it's finding ways for you know your that specific individual to be able to challenge your aggression and anger in in the right way um I mean for me I do I would say I'm a bit of both um okay. sometimes I'll be super calm um well I'd like to say most of the time but then you know you each have your moments but I think it's important once you let out that frustration that you move along you know I don't think, you know, if you see someone dinging their racket, for example, after every single point, you know, okay. I would rather just kill it and then move along yeah. and let's keep going. Because um, I think that's, yeah, I think that's, um, well, for me anyway, that works. Yeah. More for me. Important for people to understand that even Andy, for example, yes. he can get frustrated, so he can press that, that doesn't it's something that he'll do all the time. Yeah. The type of play is it works. Yeah, because I think as well, like you, you have to understand as well that all the top players are equally feeling some of the emotions that 
anyone feels and that they're not superhuman and that you know from trolls messaging you on instagram or twitter to playing a tennis match or, or whatever mm -hmm. you do in your life you know you you everyone feels the same feelings everyone can feel it and that you're not alone and that you're not the only one feeling whatever you're feeling yeah. uh, we have a few questions um one's asking if you would ever go and i'm a celebrity get me out of here. Oh, wow. Um, maybe. You know, maybe. You know, can never say never. I'm not sure I'd do very good at the heights challenge because I'm That's terrified true. of heights. Um, but no, I mean, that could be quite fun. Uh, I think it'd be more amusing for the audience than me, but um, that could make good TV, right? <laughs> yeah, it is more for the audience, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, someone's asking, who is your best friend amongst the Brits? Amongst the Brits, mm -hmm. Katie Dunn. Yeah. How long have you known each other for? So we've known each other, I think, since, oh, I think we were 11, 11, 12. So she's one year older than me. Um, but it was pretty cool. We played at Wimbledon twice together. We've traveled uh, the world a lot together. So it's, it's quite nice that we've kind of grown up together. Um, and we're still really close, so that's always really nice. Um, another question is, if you could play Olympics and mix doubles at the 2021 Olympics, which British player would you like to part with? In the mix and women's doubles? Women's and the mix doubles. Ooh. Um, mix and women's doubles. Ooh, that is tough. <laughs> Mm. Um, I would say women's doubles um, with Heather because we always have a really fun time and um, we're, you know, good friends and I think, yeah, and we also play really well together, which I think helps. Um, so with Heather for women's doubles, mixed doubles, we have so many good men's doubles players um, that it's kind of hard to choose, but... I will go with my Battle of the Brits Bulldog teammate, Joe Salisbury, because we had a great experience and great fun playing together and we played really good. Um, there's another comment saying that there seems to be a really amongst British players. Is it what teams? I mean, because it's such an individual sport. Could you repeat? I just lost you a little bit. Uh, saying that tennis is such individual sport that yeah. it's quite difficult to believe that you know players can be that nice uh, the British players are yeah I mean I think you know tennis is an incredibly lonely sport and you know people have this misconception that you know you kind of have to be friends with everyone or friends with no one and that's really not the case I think it again it's you know you each as an individual what you want to do but you know for me I'm you know good friends with a few I wouldn't say I'm that close with with everyone but um I think it's it's also really nice to have someone that you know on tour that experiences exactly the same things and for me that's with Katie Dunn. <laughs> um there's another Ian if, if Bolter or Raj got uh, they have this potential to win a slam. Do, do they have the potential to win a slam? Well, that's a that's a difficult question to answer. But you know, I think anyone can 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 do anything. I think anything is possible, really. Um, you put in the work, you climb the rankings. Takes time. Um, yeah, I think I think we have a a good crop of of young. I wouldn't say next gen because we're not all that young anymore, but we definitely have a good crop of, of Brits that um, can play really good. It's just needs to be able to be shown more in kind of the results, results terms. And Matt is asking, which top player did you enjoy playing the most? Um, hmm. I think the match against Halep this year at the Australian Open. I think having played already once on Rod Laver, um, it kind of, I say it prepared me for it, but nothing really prepares you for playing on Rod Laver again because it's 
huge. You're in a foreign country, which you're like, is anyone going to support me? Not sure. I'm an underdog here and I'm playing, I don't know what her ranking, how its ranking was at the time, probably top three. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like, the crowd is going to be heavily on support of her. Um, but I think, you know, that match there really showed that I can play at the level. It's just being, again, being able to consistently produce it. And um, I love Australia and playing in it. So I think um, that experience for me was the best. What is it play on a or Do you actually hear happening while you're playing or do you just blank it out? Um, it's funny. I always say, uh, don't look up. My coach always tells me to exaggerate my footwork and, and do those little things so that you don't just go, you know, you look up and it's so big. Mm -hmm. Like I can't tell you. It's so different from, you know, I've been on there to watch some players play. It's completely different when you're that small person walking, walking on the court. You know, it's huge side, you know, huge areas on the side, huge back everything's just huge um so i think you know and the cameras are like you feel like the camera is on your face you know it comes so low um so yeah i mean i think nothing really prepares you for that but um yeah i mean it's all good fun and i hope to be back there okay would you go into oh, finish playing someone's out. would i go into coaching <sighs> Um, I always say to my coach, I don't know how you have the patience to deal with me sometimes. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, again, I would never say never. Um, right now, my feeling would probably be no. Um, but, you know, that can change. Um, but honestly, credit to all coaches out there, how they have the patience. <laughs> how they have the patience. Sorry, it's my cat having a fight. Um, how they have the patience to deal with... Oi! Sorry, sorry. Oi! Okay. Sorry, they're just having a fight. Oh, you have. Um, we have three cats actually. Um, yeah, my mum. We call her the Mad Cat Lady. Um, so, yeah. Credit to all the coaches out there because it is tough, really tough. Um, and credit to my coaches right now. <laughs> all coaches out there. Um, I think we're going to have a lot of uh, questions from people and we would probably, I would probably keep it till midnight. <laughs> so <laughs> to end it on a quicker and fun, I mean, let's say, um, I'm just going to ask you a quick fire question. Okay. Okay. And one from someone actually, um, they were asking, what is your Christmas song? Oh, favorite Christmas song. Do you know what? I heard Chris, one Christmas song today for the first time. I thought it was a bit early, but then actually I think it's a good, it's a good thing, isn't it? Because I think people need something to look forward to after this difficult year for everyone. I think Mariah Carey, her Christmas song. All I want for Christmas is you. I think that's fun. Nice choice. <laughs> uh, summer or Christmas? Summer. Number one strength as a tennis player for you. What's your number? Mental. Okay. Um, film? The Notebook. Song you have on now. Song I have on repeat. Do you know what? That's really not a good quick fire for me because I haven't really been listening to that much music. I've been listening to a lot of podcasts. What was your favorite podcast you've listened to recently? The High Performance Podcast with Jake Humphreys and Damien Hughes. Okay. Really recommend it. It's not just about sporting individuals. It's about uh, the most successful entrepreneurs um, to visionaries. So it's really interesting um, insight to things. People can check it out. Night in or out? Night in. Phone call or text? Text. Tweet or say? Tweet or tweet or save. Tweet. Tweet. Sweet. Oh, sweet or savory. I saw you said tweet. I was like, uh, not sure. Um, sweet. Have a big sweet tooth. Okay. What's your favorite? 
my favorite dessert, anything with caramel in it. Good, good choice. Country you'd be... Country I'd most like to visit? You would move to... I'll move to Australia, but then again, it is far away, but I'd still live there. <laughs> because I love everything about Australia. I look forward to my trip every single year from the lifestyle to everyone is just so much happier. I think it's because of the weather, honestly. You know, it's, everyone's active, everyone's eating healthy or trying to, um, and it's a bit more, everyone's just a bit more relaxed and it's a, a lot more, they're a lot more easygoing in terms of just the life. And last one, Marmite or Brussels sprouts? Brussels sprouts, because I hate Marmite. <laughs> I think on that note, we will um, end our life. But thank you very much for doing this. Well, thank you very much for having me. And I hope uh, everyone's having a wild Saturday night in. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think I've watched, I think, mostly everything now on Netflix. Any TV shows? Um... Probably not for the age category that I'm watching here, okay. but um, I'm, I mean, I'm watching, yeah, one of them's a bit violent, so that's why I don't really want to say it on Instagram Live, but um, no, I've been watching some really good ones, and uh, a new series on Virgin River just came out, which is good. Um, just friendly and easy watch. I think I've honestly watched every single um series that you can possibly think of on Netflix I've probably watched it have you got a Christmas movie list yet or not yet but we always watch Home Alone I'm kind of obsessed with Home Alone it's such an easy watch fun and everyone can watch it so it's and you can kind of turn it on whenever as well which is great and yeah. I just I always end up laughing quite a lot it's always <laughs> fun no matter how yeah. many you haven't seen it before yeah I've watched it millions of times Cool. Well, thank you again. Really nice talking to you. And hopefully we'll speak soon. And hopefully you will be able to enjoy your time off seeing some friends and doing like the normal thing with you, really. Having me, really pretty. So thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.